I'd like to talk about fingering high notes on the oboe. These would be the notes from C sharp to high F. These give high school students a lot of, a lot of issues and uh, it's because the fingering system is a little more complicated. But these are notes you need to know and uh, be able to play to play successfully in your bands and play your solos. For my middle school students, I require they play up to a high D. For my high school students, I require they play up to a high F. And for my college students, I require they play up to a high G. You must play these notes because the oboe's range is very small and you can't cut out the top end of the range. We need, you need to be able to play all of these notes up high. Now I assume that you can play a high C. You know the fingering for that. Uh, one and one and the second octave key. For all high notes, you have to make sure your embouchure is very strong and your teeth are open and you really blow hard, fast air through there. Here's high C. You want it to be loud, okay? So yes, we do. Make sure it's very loud. That's very vibrating. To play a high C sharp, the fingering is two, three, one, low C. The next note higher is a D. That's a very easy transition from C-sharp to D because all I do is switch my index fingers. One index finger goes down, the other thing, index finger goes up. This is C-sharp, this is D. You just have to remember for D, it's a half hole. Keep that hole uncovered. C-sharp, D. Going to E flat, which I feel like is the most important high note fingering to know. It's very similar, or, or it's very helpful to go to an E flat from a D. D has half hole two, three, and so does E flat. Half hole two, three, but E flat has two, three on the bottom here. There's no pinky over here. You take that off from the D. And then we add the low B key. Make sure you have the low B key. You know which one is low B, not low B flat, not A flat, because the note will be out of tune if you have something other than low B. So make sure you pay attention to that. Some people are kind of sloppy about that. Okay, and then same thing, you blow hard. If you can memorize the fingering for high E flat, I know it's unusual and it feels weird, you will really strengthen your technique. I think it's the most important high note to learn. Going from E flat to E is, is even easier because E flat has half hole two, three, two, three, and so does high E. Uh, the, the differences are you have to have uh, the octave key on, the thumb, the first octave key, which I call OK1, octave key one. And then we also have to have the A flat key and the E flat key. And since we have two options for A flat and two options for E flat, we play them either both on the right side, A flat, E flat, or both on the left side, where we squish them both together with our left pinky. I call that a squish, <laughs> or the left high E. So, so the, the main fingers stay the same from E flat to E, but those side things and pinkies and things, they change. So I think that makes that a very, an easier transition from note to note. So E flat to E sounds like this. Now I have to use the E fingering on the right because it's next to the E flat where I'm using my left pinky. So I can't do the squish for the high E. I would use the squish for the high E if a D was in front of it, because for a high D, I have to have my pinky on the low C. And I can't do the E flat and A flat here. Most people prefer doing the two on the right side. They don't like the squish, but you have to do the squish because you can't go from D to E without doing that.
The final high note to know is the high F. And it's very easy to play a high F if you can play a high E because there's only one finger different. So if I'm playing my high E, one, half hold, two, three, two, three. I have my octave key, okay one, first octave key, and the right A flat, E flat. That's the E. To go to F, I just pick up my ring finger, that's it. That's the only difference between them. It's true also for the left E. I have the squish, and then all I do is pick up my ring finger. So if you can work on these high fingerings, even little by little, I know it's hard, people resist it. It's very important that you do it. Uh, practice them with your scales. Uh, when you get to them in your band music, you will be much happier that you did because they will appear in your band music and it will make it so much easier for you to play them.